So uh, youth work, youth work is something I'm really passionate about because it, uh, it changed my life. And um, youth services since like 2010 have been cut on average by 69% in the country. And actually in Gateshead, it's 96% cut. If you take that along with the closures of children's centres, sure start, youth clubs, libraries, swimming pools, sexual health services, mental health services, youth centres, you know, like the situation's like pretty tragic. Um, for me, when I was, uh, it's brilliant doing a TED talk, by the way, because when I was a kid, I used to have to go to speech therapy. I was really uh, late in speaking, I was nervous, there was a lot of stuff going on, and um, when I was about 14, 15 year old, I was put into, uh, well, not a children's home, it was meant to be care, but really it was just a bed and breakfast down Whitley Bay with a load of adults. I saw a social worker once, I was given the keys to a flat in the dodgiest part of Wall's End uh, on my 16th birthday. I just sort of left a fend for myself. The only people that were uh, making money around me were, were wrongings, do you know what I mean? Um, so obviously I was going to try and follow suit. But I was going to the community centre and I was using the gym and there was one youth worker that uh, took the time. And um, she asked us to go and help out with some of the younger kids because they were giving her grief. So then all of a sudden, there's got all of these little kids all shut up. And I was like, fucking hell, these people are getting paid to take them go-karting and rock climbing. I could do this. <laughs> so, um, I know it was legal. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, so, I found it very easy to work with young people. The, the kids that the workers found difficult to work with were very easy for me to engage with. And uh, I reached out my qualifications. I'd done... Um, I done, uh, started doing my youth work training and I eventually ended up working all over the region. I went down to London um, and I, I worked in South East London with inner city gangs, ended up in Jamaica on a homeless project um, in the ghetto. Ended up working with young people from Chernobyl, Israel, Palestine and um, a production company asked us Sorry, I'm, I love piercing. I kind of talk without piercing. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm staying in the spot, though. I don't know if this spot's here for a reason or if I'm just piercing in it. <laughs> so, um, I'll just keep doing it, innit? <laughs> so, uh, where was I? So, a production company asked us if I would go and help them out. So, they were making a, um, a film about uh, teenage pregnancy. And uh, we went and done it, and I won a BAFTA. And then another production company asked us to go and help them out with um, uh, a film about knife crime. So we went and worked with the perpetrators of knife crime with Sunderland Youth Offending Team and it won an RTS award. And uh, it started to open my eyes at how we could use like media and the creative arts to uh, apply that kind of that creativity and, and uh, you've, you use youth work theory and community development theory. Um, I worked in Bradford after the riots and uh, brought in a load of ARDF money <coughs> and regenerated a youth centre and turned it into a community centre right in the heart of the area that was uh, like sort of savaged by the riots. Came back to the region and I was working at Bernardo's uh, teenage pregnancy team with young dads and um, we'd won all parliamentary award, British midwifery award, British medical journal award. Some of these kids were like 12 year old, first time they had sex and became a father, do you know what I mean? It was pretty hard, hardcore work and then the financial crisis happened, and then that's when all of the services were cut. Our team of 26 was like cut to three pretty much overnight. And I thought there's got to be a way to try and engage with young people, like en masse, because like my boss, my boss's boss, everyone was just like unemployed. There's a full generation of youth workers and community development workers and some of the best talent in the UK that have just been abandoned and left just like what happened to the shipyard workers on the river. So I thought, right, well, what are young people into? They're into gaming, music, film, social media. So drew down some European money. I make that sound easy, but it was like four years of hell, right? 
So I drew down some European money and we decided to try and create uh, an interactive film series. So when I was a kid, I used to love reading the old uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books. And you would, be, you would read a page and it would stop and say, go to page 14 if you want to go to the Haunted Castle or turn to page 16 if you want to go to the Enchanted Forest or whatever. And I thought, well, as a youth worker, like, or as a professional or even as a parent, what you try to do is you try to warn kids, don't do that because that'll happen, don't do this because that'll happen. So I thought, like, well, let's apply that kind of methodology. So we sat down with uh, some workers and we thought, let's, the first episode, let's try and cover as much as we can. So we created this interactive uh, film. We wrote 455 pages of script and um, it's basically a young girl the night before a final A-level exam. Does she go to the party? Yes or no. If she doesn't go to the party, her boyfriend will come around and try to have sex with her. It's up to you if you say yes or no. If you say yes, do you use a condom or not? If you don't uh, and you have unprotected sex, she goes to college the next day and we filmed 11 different outcomes of that and the game engine will pick one so you've got a chance of pregnancy, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, genital warts, herpes, <laughs> crabs. <laughs> oh, they're all clear. But um, regardless of what it is, like even if it's chlamydia, the character will always be like, oh my God, chlamydia, what's that? And then the sexual health worker can deliver exactly what a sexual health worker would deliver, the advice. If you go to the party, you get offered a 50-50 chance of pills or weed, it's up to you if you take it. Uh, you've then got a 50-50 chance of being ill or okay, but even if you're okay, everything has a consequence. So if you get stoned the next day, you're going to turn your alarm off, turn your alarm off, forget your pen, not perform as well. If you have the pill and have a good time, uh, you're just going to come down so like the exam's ruined. So um, anyway, we didn't realise that a feature film's only 90 pages of script and we wrote like two-thirds of Lord of the Rings trilogy, right? <laughs> and... Um, would wrote the most complex interactive film ever. And I was like, so I had 100,000 Facebook fans. We went, I got commissioned for episode two. So I went back to, to South East London. We worked with the Ben Kinsella Trust. Ben Kinsella had wrote a letter to the, the mayor, Boris Johnson at the time, and had said that he was worried about knife crime and stuff. About a week or two later, he was stabbed and killed. His parents set up the trust. We worked with CAMS, we worked with the NHS, we worked with what was left of children's services and the police and we're, we sat down and mapped out this episode. And like basically, if you imagine like a family tree, that's what it looks like. And like all of the bad things, all of the things that these professionals see form the basics of the, of the, um, of the episode. And then we go and engage with young people, but because we're not the police and because we're not the youth service or because we're not this, we're like, yeah, we're gonna make a film. So all the kids are like, yeah, man, let's get on it. So if we're going to college or university, I mean, Utilise the English students, drama students, film, fashion, hair, advertising, internet, you name it, marketing. We can get like the full campus on board. We launched that episode, we had 200,000 people. And then we did uh, the third episode in Deptford, which was about mental health and suicide. Like suicide's the biggest killer in young people. People under 35, it's the biggest killer in men. I've lost like 30 friends probably in the last 10 years. It's mad that all of these services are being cut. So anyway, we wrote this episode and that one had 16 endings. And um, we, uh, again, we engaged with services like CAMS, like the mental health team or what was left of it and stuff. And um, we wrote this episode, it wasn't about getting the character to a final destination, this one was about uh, revealing layers to what was going on in the, in, the, in the person's life, so there's 16 possible endings on that one. We're then being commissioned, we've just finished, or it's about to launch actually, episode four, which is child sex exploitation and grooming. So all of these are like hard hitting issues and we don't pull any punches. But what we did manage to do is work and set the career off of any amount of young people and using the internet and using gaming and using this year, which is the basics of youth work to engage with young people. So even the writing process is actually something that uh, when you're engaging with young people, they're thinking they're writing a script. Well, they are writing the script, but actually what you're getting them to do is think about the consequences and the choices and they're getting to think about the, the good things and the bad things that can happen to you. And um, 
We've just been commissioned for episode five, and we're down in Essex now doing that. Um, and that's about isolation and loneliness. It's going to be the first time you've got eight characters to choose from. Uh, we've got a trans character in there. We've got um, a young character on the face of it. He looks, uh, he's living in a wealthy part of Essex, but his family work in the city. He lives off Deliveroo. We've got another character that um, is in care. So we try to cover as many of the, the issues that young people face. And it'll never replace that face-to-face -face work or that intervention. Um, but if you think about it, like that 26 grand a year youth worker that was cut because of austerity, I was just one person that that person worked with. How many other people have they went on and worked with? And how many people have I went on and worked with face to face? And the impact of that one cut is, is massive. It's like dropping a stone in a pond, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like think of all of them young people I could have uh, been helped by these workers. We've now got 7.1 million people on Facebook. Some weeks I reach 188 million people a week. In the last 90 days, we've had 849 social media impressions with no advertising or marketing spend because young people created it. Because young people created it, they share it uh, because the production quality is really high. It's like something that they would see um, on television, the friends and family and everyone shares it. In some weeks, we reach a, in some months, sorry, we reach like 140 million people in America, which is 65% of all Facebook users have seen our stuff. And uh, 25 million people in the UK. We won uh, innovation awards in youth work. We won uh, innovation in business, in health, in social care. Uh, five of the actors from the first episode went on to win five BAFTAs. A load of them have set themselves up in theatre companies. Some of them young people, one of our young people from episode one, she was at risk of honor based violence. She was practically homeless. I spent loads of time with her and got social services and stuff engaged. Got a benefit sorted. I was meant to be on set. I was on the phone shouting and bawling at social services for two days. Um, like the amount of young people that we've directly helped. The, uh, the end uh, result of it is this massive wealth of content. And uh, what we've done with it is edit. If you imagine like a family tree, we've edited all of the possible routes. Because like, if a professional was to go on, it's like random where you're going to end up. So we edited them all down. And um, we now created a try learning section. So there's uh, 12, 13 clinical commissioning groups across the UK. We're getting an independent study uh, done from uh, Sunderland Uni. We're engaged with Oxford Uni and uh, Nottingham University as well. And we're going to have a look to see what kind of impact this is happening. Um, and with all of that footage, we're now created like an e-learning section called Try Learning. We wrote educational material around like um, uh, mental health, sexual health, relationships, equality and diversity, so it can be used in the classroom and a teacher can pick the, pick the storyline where the character ends up pregnant or where the character carries the knife and gets arrested. Um, it's just been an absolutely fantastic journey. And the impact of it uh, has just been phenomenal. We got took over to Hollywood, right? So our... Uh, I'll present to 150 people in Hollywood and you only meant to have 30 seconds on stage. But I, I was knackered. I'd spent 13 hours getting there. I was with three and a half grand or something and I thought, they're not getting this microphone off me. Like, <laughs> So I had, I had this woman chasing us, you know what I mean? And I was just like... <laughs> and um, uh, she says, will you come down, down to South Central with us? And I was like, I would love to. And... Um, I turned up at a house in North Hollywood the next day. I walked in and there's pictures of her with like uh, Harrison Ford and um, Ridley Scott and all that. And I'm like, whose house am I in here? Do you know what I mean? And uh, she was like, did I tell you what I'd done? And I was like, no. She was like, I'm the producer of Blade Runner. I was like, what? And Convoy. Do you know what I mean? I loved that when I was a kid. So anyway, uh, we went out to South Central and we, uh, I taught some sessions in school. 
with these kids and I was like, you don't have to be a filmmaker to make a film. Some of our aerial shots, we didn't have any money, so we got the actors to act it out uh, under the CCTV and then put a £10 freedom of information request in, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, yeah, man. Anyway, so through that, we ended up uh, working uh, or about to start on a project in, um, in South Central. But uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, nice one, man.